morning. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar, Converting Your Physical Fundraising Event to Virtual. This session is being recorded and the archive will be posted to the UCI Division of Continuing Education on Demand recordings page. My name is Keisha Baton. I am a program coordinator here at UCI Division of Continuing Education. Here you can see a brief outline of what we're going to cover in this webinar session. So I will start off with a quick overview of Zoom features so you'll know how to submit questions throughout the presentation. Next, I'll be providing some information about our nonprofit management specialized studies program, which is fully online. I will cover the program requirements, fees, and details regarding upcoming courses for our fall quarter, which begins on October 19th. Then I will then turn it over to our guest presenter, Noel Wax. At the end of his presentation, we will have a brief Q&A session. And then finally, I will leave you with my contact information so that you can send us any additional questions that we did not address. So you may send questions directly to all panelists via the chat panel right here. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the webinar today, please send a chat message and we will help you troubleshoot any issues. If you have any question for either myself or Noel regarding the content of this presentation, also submit it in the chat panel. We will address it all at the end if we have time. Be sure to send your questions to all panelists. Okay, so here is a brief overview of the Nonprofit Management Specialized Studies Program. This program is designed to help you take a more proactive approach to the organizational needs and activities of both large and small nonprofit organizations. After completion of the program, you will have the knowledge base and skills to contribute to high functioning nonprofit teams and productive fundraising operations. Our program is designed for a number of audiences. These include nonprofit staff members and development staff, volunteer coordinators, career changers who are looking to enter the nonprofit sector, and individuals seeking professional development opportunities. The program consists of seven required courses for a total of 11 units. A certificate is awarded upon successful completion of all program requirements. Students must earn a letter grade of C or better in each course in order to be eligible for the certificate. And all requirements must be completed within five years after the student enrolls in his or her first course. As I mentioned in the previous slide, this program consists of seven online courses. The seven required courses are listed here. So we start with nonprofit management fundamentals, fundraising models and resource devel development, nonprofit financial management, stakeholder and board management, nonprofit strategy, nonprofit HR and operations, and last, nonprofit marketing and communications. We highly recommend that new students take the fundamental course first. However, you can feel free to take the courses in any order that you feel um, fit your needs. In the upcoming fall quarter, we'll be all offering these two courses, Nonprofit Management Fundamentals and Nonprofit Financial Management. Both classes are starting on October 19th, and as you can see, each course is listed with a start date and the end date, as well as a course fee of $475 per course. Registration is currently open right now, so any students, if you're interested, you may enroll right now, either online or by calling our student services office. You can see the contact information here in the slide. And we always recommend enrolling at least a couple of weeks prior to the start date. Each course in our program costs $475. So you are looking at 3,360 in course fees for the seven online classes. Note that you do not pay the entire total upfront. You simply pay for each course individually at the time of enrollment. There is also a $35 request for specialized studies digital certificate fee. Please note that this amount does not include textbooks, which some courses may require. Textbook inf information is posted on the enrollment page, so you'll know if the course materials are required before you enroll in the class. 
Our nonprofit program is also an approved provider of continuing education points for Certified Fundraising Executive, or CFRE. CFRE is a professional organization with valid and reliable certification process for fundraising professionals. There are many benefits in becoming a CFRE, which includes career advantages, greater earning potentials, and access to a worldwide network of fellow fundraising professionals. If you want to learn more, visit the CFRE website at cfre.org. Finally, this is a screenshot of our NPM Specialized Studies Program brochure. If you do not have the brochure, you can simply download it off of our website. And then similar to our website, the brochure contains general information about the program and each course descriptions. When viewing the course schedule, you'll notice that not all classes are offered every single quarter, so please plan accordingly. Today's presenter is Noel Wax. After 25 years career as a senior executive at CBS, Noel Wax founded Groundswell Group, a socially responsible marketing agency connecting brands with nonprofits for mutual benefit. Noel is a founder of Noel's Heroes, a charity that works with the disadvantaged youth, providing training, education, and resources for career development. He also sits on a number of nonprofit boards. Noel has become an expert in the fields of converting physical events to virtual events. Currently, he resides in Los Angeles with his wife and two young learning from home children. Well, we are very excited to have him logged in today to present on a topic, converting your physical fundraising event to virtual. I'm going to go ahead now and hand it over to Noel so he can further introduce himself and begin his presentation. Great. Thank you, Keja. What a yeah. lovely introduction. Uh, it's nice to say hello to everyone here. Uh, let me just make sure that I am able to control the presentation here. Okay. So I am actually trying to move it forward, Keja. I'm, 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 I just want to be sure I'm able to move the presentation forward here. Are you not? Just click, yeah. Uh, yeah, no. uh, there we go. Yeah, just make sure we make it um, full size. Okay. Getting there. So it's your, it's, we have, I'm on your screen. Yes. There we go. Yes. Keep scrolling down. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's okay. There you go. Oh, you keep, keep going down because yeah. your slide is number 11 or 12. Or 13. There you go. Got it. And here we go. All right. Well, oh, I think <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the, your first slide. I feel like we lost that. I'm, I'm, I've lost control there. Um, so sorry. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have control over the screen anymore. Okay, let me let me do something. Hold on. Okay. Uh, remote control or board control? Okay, are you able to control it right now? It's not allowing me to. Uh, uh, it looks tried. like you are. Go ahead. He's clicked into. He clicks first right in the screen, and then it should be able to control it, right? Is he using? Are you using your keyboard or your mouse or your keyboard? Okay. Uh. I already see Noel Wax is controlling your screen on my screen right now. Okay, let's try to use your. Try to click on the slides to advance them. Maybe that would be better to do. I've, yeah, because it's showing the option. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just not showing the option to expand the screen. Let me pull this off here. 
the bottom yeah if you go on the bottom it should go into presentation mode yeah it's, i'm not able to see that unfortunately on my screen okay i mean i'm able to control this part so i'm good here but now we okay I, if you control this part i think that's okay you just have to make the powerpoint um full screen maybe yeah sorry that's just not showing my option here to do that on the bottom you can't you can't you don't see the the toolbar at the bottom of the the share fortunately no okay what about the resume slideshow pop up on the left oh Oh no. no it's yeah, getting no. worse. Yeah. Okay, let's um Noel, why don't you I will click for you and then you can just present. Perfect. Thank so you. we'll work together. Yeah. That sounds great. Okay. All right. Just let me know. So well in practice. All right. So thanks everybody. Uh <laughs> great to be here. Um and I appreciate the invitation, Kesha. You and the entire team over at UCI have been absolutely terrific. And I'm excited to present to you all uh the converting your physical fundraising event to virtual. Uh, the world has changed so dramatically over the last six months. Um, I'm gonna make some assumptions as we kick this off. And one of those assumptions is you're here because you have a need, you're either in the space of nonprofits, interested in the space of nonprofits, having an upcoming event that you are considering your options for that or figuring out how to stay connected to your audience of contributors or supporters you're in the right place for that. I also am gonna assume that you may have some Zoom fatigue right now. Uh, there is so much out there for consumption of content and data and information. We could spend 24 hours a day on another Zoom call or meeting. So how do we do this in a way that is thoughtful and also productive and keeping engaged with our audience? Uh, another assumption is there's a lot of uncertainty that's out there um, and that's totally understandable. We are not able right now to circle a date on our calendars when things will return to a new normal. We'll be able to produce events again where there's actually live bodies and live people there. We certainly know a lot more now than we did six months ago about ways to do that. We're still a little ways off from happening and I want to talk a little bit about that as well. And also you really want to stay connected with your audience and your supporters. Uh, so those are some of the, the assumptions I make going into this presentation. I also uh, want to mention that there's a book out there called You Can't Teach a Kid to Ride a Bike at a Seminar. Um, and that is true for a webinar or Zoom call as well, is while I'm going to give you a lot of tips and tools on how to make the conversion and suggest that you do in fact make the conversion, uh, but in an hour long or 30 minute presentation, you are not going to be able to figure out how to do all of this. There's a lot of tips and tricks. Hopefully you'll take a few pieces away from this that are incredibly beneficial to you. Um, also on the call from our end is my right hand when it comes to all things event production. Steve Bingham Hawk um, is producing all of our events. And again, over the last six months has learned an extraordinary amount about converting physical to virtual. While we are not selling anything on this call, we do help uh, nonprofits to convert their events and help produce their events when they want to move to virtual. So if you are so inclined and here's something that you uh, like or want to learn more about, we are absolutely available uh, and are happy to do some kind of an advisory call on that. But this is the do-it-yourself version of what we think are some of the best practices um, to, to proceed with. Lastly, before we move slides here is um, where we are now is, as I mentioned earlier, we still can't circle the date. I think we all want to be able to circle a date on our calendars to say, uh, March of 2021, we'll be able to get back to what we once knew. That is not uh, where we are. Um, there is a lot of positive information and statistics and data out there about the benefits of what will be eventually a blended event, meaning a combination of live in person with some form of streaming or virtual event to go along with that. So what we are doing now in this space is in fact going to benefit all of us in the long term because we get accustomed to this and people that can't fly out or don't want to fly out or attend an event can still consume the extraordinarily important content that we will be providing or you will be providing in a blended environment. There's nothing like the real thing or the live thing, but this is a way to introduce a new audience to um, the services and the nonprofits and all the work that are happening. And then lastly is there's a lot of data now out there that people will 
uh, and want to come back to live events when they are safe and when they are legal again. So that's a positive thing. I think it's still a very much a mixed bag, but a lot of data, a lot of data, a lot of research on people saying when we are able to and when we're able to safely, we will come back. Uh, many of us in the nonprofit space already deal with uh, compromised communities and compromised people. So that's an extra consideration for us all to think about as we consider what the future looks like. But for now, let's uh, move, on, move on into our next slide uh, and talk a little bit about the, uh, can, can you shrink the screen down a little bit? Cause I, I'm not able to see, there we go, I got it. Okay, so um, great introduction. Um, I, have a, I have a number of years in the industry uh, 25 years in, in traditional media, sports, and entertainment, representing some of the biggest brands in the world, from Super Bowls to CBS to the Yankees and Cowboys, multiple teams. But I also come from a perspective of having my own charity. That's called Knowles Heroes. So we do a lot of work with kids, uh, mostly that have survived childhood trauma, uh, health scare, disease, cancer, and at some point want to determine what they want to do in their lives. So we deal a lot with kids that might have some social or confidence challenges. And we try to prepare them and, and help them understand that we are all human. We all put our pants uh, legs on one at a time. And there are opportunities to build that confidence through exposure to people that are in those positions and trying to help them create a vision or a goal for who and what they want to be. And then break that down in a way that's a almost a formulaic approach to what they need to do to achieve that success. I sit on a number of boards. Uh, we've produced hundreds and hundreds of events, work with hundreds of charities, and I'm an avid, rabid, passionate, and neurotic about finding ways to help nonprofits fulfill their mission. That's a huge part of what we do and how I personally am built. Uh, we can move on here, please. So here, here's our goal today. I wanna to give you, the nonprofit community, the steps and tools and confidence and inspiration to convert your physical fundraising event to virtual. I highlighted this section here because uh, many now and, and over the last six months and into the next six to 12 months are actually canceling their events. I implore you and beg you not to do that. Um, you don't want to cancel your event uh, in some way, shape or form. What that is doing, if you do in fact cancel an event is it's giving your supporters, or your contributors a reason to break that connection. And even if it's the most simple or basic form of virtual events, your supporters, and this is what we are seeing, will continue to support you in any way that you can. But if you take this off their calendar, they are given permission, so to speak, not to continue to support you in a way, and you will see a lot of attrition that is unnecessary. Let's move along, please. Thank you. So here, here are some of the, the categories of discussion. Um, there's a simple and powerful virtual solution to get you through the year into better times. Uh, there's converting a second half of the year, or even into first half of next year, race, walk, run, auction, gala, or other virtual event. And why I invited Steve on the call is that again, that's his area of expertise. He is observing the call today, but he again is my right hand and has produced dozens of these events now. And those are all in fact events that can be converted from physical to virtual quite efficiently these days. Again, nothing quite like the real thing, but an experience that your contributors and supporters will walk away saying that was a positive experience. They are very thoughtful about how to do this in a way that helps me feel engaged and involved and in supporting a great cause, even though I couldn't be there like I was used to. And then lastly, is creating a unique and special virtual experience as a spring springboard for what this will be for you in the future. And by that, I mean probably more a blended event in the future where people that can't attend or don't want to attend can still attend in a virtual capacity. And those that do and will and want to attend in person can do it that way as well. So here, here are the, the, the steps that I want you all to take away from and learn here. So say first is just to say yes to doing, make the commitment that you are in fact going to have your event. Uh, you'll want to either select or keep the date. If the date for your event is October 27th or November 3rd or December 16th, keep that date. Uh, that's a, a great option. If you don't have a date, select your date. So choose the best format. I'll go through a bunch of suggestions that we have. Yes, Zoom is on the list, but so too 
are other options that are out there. I've actually been introduced to a really neat platform recently that is uh, Remo, R-E-M-O dot co. And there's a lot of them that are out there. While Zoom is one option that was built before the business of online events and functions existed. They've made some nice pivots to support that, but they're still a little bit more of a B2B platform, but a very desirable option. And I'll show you some others as well. You still want to plan your event logistics and content. Um, if you have the capabilities in-house, that's great to be able to do that as you would a traditional or typical in-person live event. You still want to pay a lot of attention to those logistics where an event may have been a three, four, five hour ordeal. Maybe this is something that's now an hour and you get people online in a webinar or virtual event for one hour. So you wanna be very uh, structured on how you are going to do that. Uh, there's going to be some problem solving. Obviously we are dealing with that today and have dealt with that today. We dealt with that on our preparation call as well, but you, some planning in some cases for the unexpected and planning to have some things that may or may not come up uh, as much as you can prepare and then being prepared for those that you can't actually prepare for as well. You wanna be sure you're continuing to promote the event, rehearsing and practicing, going live and then your follow-up. And I wanna circle that, I'll spend a moment on that, but follow-up is really critical because you will often have an event. And one of the mistakes that we all make, whether it's a live event or a virtual event, is we just forget to circle back one last time with the participants, either for feedback from them, one last ask for them from support, and other ways you can do that where you may have thought that this one hour we got to spend with them virtually was their opportunity to support us. They may have gotten off. They may have forgotten to click the link. They may not have participated as actively as we would have liked. That follow-up is an, an opportunity and where somewhere between 20 to 25% of your contributions or proceeds or generosity from your contributors is going to come from that follow-up. So we are seeing when nonprofits do it, a 20 to 25% lift over those that aren't doing it in a apples to apples comparison. Next slide, please. So the format is basically, we're seeing this as, sort of, as two real formats here. One is the live stream event. And this is your, I'm gonna call it basic because it's still relatively new, but we are recreating your physical events with a live stream. It can include all of the aspects of ticketing, registration, donations before, during, and after the event. This is if you want to recreate a live event experience, a gala, an auction, a race, a walk, day of service, or even a dance marathon. That's your live event stream. And it does take some production to pull that together. Uh, and then the other is a more of a campaign. And I think many of you on this call that have, have some experience here can, can continue to do those in a way that you have historically. So it's a limited online fundraiser hosted on a campaign landing page. This could be telethons, peer-to-peer, -peer, DIY events, birthday fundraisers. So this is more over a sort of longer period of time as a campaign versus a specific event. We're gonna spend some time today on the event side of it, not as much time on the campaign side of it. Next slide, please. So this, these are your platforms. I, I'm sure you all have seen or been, been exposed to these before. We go from what is free, uh, easy to use to there might be a, a service or a paid platform. Since I submitted this presentation to Keja and the team, um, I, again, I've, I don't wanna mention them too many times. We're not a, a paid partner of theirs, but remo.co is one that has come to surface as a paid, but really interactive and, and, and uh, engaging option as well. At the end, I'm gonna share some platforms, one of which we are a partner of uh, that we use for more of the race walks and runs. But from an event perspective, you have these options. Uh, Facebook and YouTube, I put them in a similar bucket. Uh, Facebook is really the easiest to use for live stream beginners. Real quickly, you can get up and running. Um, if you wanna have a handful of people in both a recorded capacity, as well as a live capacity, similar with YouTube, you can create a blended experience at the end of the presentation here, I'm gonna show you what would be a fairly typical one hour live event uh, structure uh, that I think is a pretty good one to follow. Uh, Zoom can be a free option. And then there's also a, a paid option. We would probably suggest from a limited investment perspective, the paid options, I think you can work out some of the bugs and wrinkles in that. And then you can also live stream that on both uh, YouTube and Facebook. So it covers off 
on both of those options as well. They are offering discounts, uh, nonprofit discounts and other discounts for uh, different options that are there, but for as little as 15 bucks a month, uh, you can get into a really nice Zoom option there. And I think people, you know, Zoom has become a little bit like what Google is, where they are a bit of the go-to. We, uh, we like them. We think there's a lot of great solutions and robust offerings that they have. But as I mentioned earlier, they're still a little bit more of a B2B platform working some of these solutions into their existing technology for a nonprofit or an event production that does provide great tools and services available there as well. And then also you know, Vimeo, a little bit similar, that's a little bit more of a state-of-the-art live event broadcasting software, still can get into that as a fairly affordable option. Um, those are, that's a little bit more sort of video heavy, content heavy, production heavy, uh, but still a great option as a platform or service for sort of a next tier, next level production quality uh, as, a, as an environment to produce and introduce your event to your guests. And then obviously, not obviously, but esports and gaming is a big deal now. We see a lot of our partners wanting to introduce their supporters and contributors into something a little bit more interactive and engaging around either esports or gaming. If that is the case with your organization, um, this is a really nice integrated platform. They also have the opportunity to support and co-support an event that you would host on their platform because they've got millions, tens of millions of users that they can ultimately market out to as well to help introduce your nonprofit and your event into a new audience of people that would be there to potentially support your, your cause and your initiative as well. Uh, so those are some of the, you know, I, I, again, I call this blocking and tackling, but the key platforms and key partners, easy to get in, easy to learn. All of these providers also have learning tools and I've been through all of them. They have regular conferences and webinars on the how to's that make it really easy to get into these platforms and learn within a half hour, you can become a moderate expert in how to host uh, on these platforms. Also, these are live links. So when you get this deck and presentation after this webinar event, you, these are all live links that take you directly to both the how to and also um, information on these specific platforms as it relates to a hosting an event. Uh, so we can, we can move on to the next slide. Great. So here's a little bit about logistics and I'm a big fan here of ensuring your logistics are set up right. Um, you, you, you are saving money on many of the things like the venue itself, which was the core. And I know many cases we get those donated to us for use, but decorations and flowers and signage and food and drinks. That is not only a huge chunk of time, but also often an expense. Um, in, in lucky scenarios, our nonprofit partners and you all get those contributed to them, but there's usually expense lines associated with that. So you will still need a budget. Those will not necessarily be part of it in the immediate future and as long as we're doing virtual events, but having a budget and goals and timelines of the platform and equipment are still a really important part of your logistics protocols. Um, please don't overlook that part of it because as much as you can plan, there are things that come up that you'll want to be prepared for, budgeted for. Uh, you might think down the road, hey, this might be a good thing for us to invest a couple of bucks in because our return on investment will ultimately result in more contributions because our users will have had a more positive experience coming out of that event. You wanna keep things fresh. You wanna keep them moving. You wanna build, grow, and maintain excitement. You wanna have different people speaking to um, your audience of people to keep it fresh. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to you obviously for 30 or 40 minutes consecutive here, which is not ideal. I'd like to think that I'm somewhat entertaining, but in a typical um, event scenario or virtual event scenario, you do wanna have different people. Um, you'll see a link here where it says guest appearance and supporter feed. Guest appearance, when you get this, click on that link. Um, it's a funny interlude. And what I did there was show you an example of how easy it is to introduce 
a pre-recorded or even live segment. In this case, it's just me pretending like I am a Wimbledon tennis star talking to you as an audience and saying, hey, it's unfortunate that I'm not going to be seeing you at Wimbledon this year because Wimbledon did not exist, but uh, it's in a really important cause that you're supporting here. And for you to support this initiative, especially in this year of uncertainty, here's a way to do it. Click on this link right here to your right, and you'll be able to support the cause that you uh, love so much. And I'll take a moment to say that anyone that will be supporting you or anyone that will be in a live event will be somebody that will want to support you. So give them that opportunity. Uh, there's also live links here. So there, there'll be music opportunities when you're having a little break in between, play some music, make it feel like your attendees are actually at an event. The more you can entertain, the more they'll appreciate, the more they'll be generous, the more they'll be engaged. Um, there are three live links here that I do want you to click on when you get this on how to stream successfully, your best practices, and then making the most of Facebook Live. So whichever platform you choose, do your due diligence. These are all tips and tricks and, and shortcuts to how to maximize your experience as a host in those specific environments. And then this is similar to what you are accustomed to in hosting your live events, but get those people involved that have either historically been involved uh, are notable figures, they're influencers. We do this uh, nearly all day, every day when we're hosting and producing events is who in our community can we ask to get involved? People want to stay connected to their community. So your community leaders or people that are of interest in your specific field or the community that you are supporting, um, they'll want to be involved now more than ever. Not only does that help break up the uh, the event into piece, smaller bite-sized pieces that people will stay engaged. It's also an opportunity for them to help you to market your event because they'll want people to know that they're appearing, that they're supporting your cause, that they will reach out to their hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of followers to say, hey, join me for this incredible live event to support this incredible cause in our community doing great work right now. So those are really, really important parts that you don't want to overlook. Now, I don't think it should be a long list of if you have 60 minutes with people, you know, 60 different people, because people will get bored and distracted pretty quickly, just as they will if you have nobody. But a handful of those are giving them an opportunity to speak to your community about the important things going on in an entertaining and engaging way. We'll go on the next slide here. <clears throat> And I'm gonna leave some time at the end. Hopefully uh, I'm creating opportunity for you to have uh, questions, thoughts, feedback, or some level of engagement. Uh, promoting your event. This is an area for us of real import and expertise. Um, you're gonna need something in your virtual environment to collect donations before, during, and after. Uh, there is a page here as we'll get to it that is uh, again, live links to suggestions that we make on how to do that. But I, I joke, I think during an hour or two with your guests in a virtual capacity and not including your before and after promotion, you just want to be sure you continue to give them the opportunity to support you. Uh, you know, they understand, as you very well know, that they are there for a reason. It's there to support you in one way or another. There's not as much the opportunity to volunteer at these live events anymore as people used to be able to do. Uh, maybe publicity and PR would be a great way for them to help support, but donations ultimately is what we want out of these things so you continue to move your mission forward. So just be sure, and again, there are some suggestions at the end of the presentation, be sure you have ample opportunity and multiple opportunities for people to literally click on a button during your events and a reminder from you or whoever your MC is or your guests it should be done multiple times throughout the event and make it very easy and do not feel guilty for a moment that you're giving them an opportunity to uh, support you and raise money for you. Uh, when you're, when you're uh, promoting your event, make sure you share that page. You're running social media. All of these social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even LinkedIn have, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, a pro bono service that allow you to market and or advertise 
for free um, on their platforms, your event, and obviously into your communities as well, because that's what I would call your P1 audience. Uh, people that can attend, that's gonna be awesome. Some people won't be able to attend or don't want to attend for any number of reasons. Be sure they have ample opportunity to support you and what you're doing. Uh, again, on the bottom of this page here, when you get your deck, um, there are team fundraising, and this is a link into team fundraising. So empower your supporters like you always do to ensure they have ample opportunity to get their network of people to support your really important mission. And I would say, again, now more than ever, um, we all know the numbers of uh, either contributions that are down because they've been earmarked, earmarked towards other causes this year, be it uh, BLM, a very important movement, or COVID-related initiatives. But your cause, whatever it is, still needs the support. You still need to move forward with your mission. And the work that you're doing is incredibly important. So again, please don't give them the opportunity to move into uh, another area of support or disconnect from you in any way, because what you're doing is still critical and important. Let's go ahead and move uh, on. And by the way, thanks for bearing with me, Kesha. You're doing an incredible, incredible job of moving this forward. Thank you. Um, so uh, rehearse. So this is critical. Um, we did this for this presentation, uh, as I do all presentations, but make sure that you do that. Uh, your video, your sound, your connection, your backdrops, uh, your live stream platform. There are going to be little bumps and bruises along the way. We are all human as much as we are more engaged with our technology than ever, but um, rehearse it, practice it. And then when you're in that moment, when things come up, hopefully you have someone extraordinary. And this would be a great, a great example of uh, having somebody there to support you while as much as you've practiced and rehearsed, this would be your production partner. Again, whether it's us or someone in house, someone to be there when your production uh, may have a bump or a hiccup, and it does happen uh, often uh, that you're able to work through that. But don't, don't be afraid of the technology. Don't be afraid of the bumps and the hiccups. I think everybody nowadays is having that experience. Every one of us could share an experience of someone that was muted on a Zoom call or someone that their technology didn't quite work or they were uh, pushed out or dropped out or their baby jumped in uh, crying or their dog. We are all having those experiences now. So as much as you can have the support and partner in your production, the better and more seamless these will run. But again, to expect the unexpected. One person in charge of making sure your script is followed, that's your MC, a production partner, a backup moderator, um, uh, someone might get sick, someone might not be available, a panelist or, or a CEO might not be available. There's so many things. So rehearse and practice and then have your backup plans in place. And we can certainly provide the things to think about. Uh, what happens when this goes down? What should you do here? Uh, those are all opportunities to continue to grow and have your, uh, your followers, your supporters, your contributors fall more and more in love with you as you move forward, understanding again that you are human and ultimately what this is about is supporting an incredible initiative and an incredible cause. Let's go ahead on the next slide. So the moment you're going live, um, own it, be loose, make your mistakes, they're inevitable. It's a live feed and in often cases uh, combined with uh, some recorded stuff that might happen. Um, your supporters are just gonna be excited to join you for this new, uh, and now maybe not so new experience. It's a virtual event. So there's a lot of really neat opportunities. Be sure that you're engaging, uh, you're driving that real time interaction. If this were a, an actual event, I would have mentioned again numerous times to say, hey, notice on the top right, top left, middle of your screen, there is that contribution or donate now button. I want to not be afraid to ask you to contribute right now. Uh, we've put a lot into ensuring that you are going to be entertained during this hour, engaged during this hour, um, uh, and so many other things, but we are still on a mission. And you know, last year we were able to generate a million dollars during this uh, event. This year, our numbers and expectations are down a little bit, but your contributions are still incredibly important. Um, thank you for all being here. Uh, we appreciate you, our faithful supporters. We are continuing to rely on you. Never been more important time than to be involved than now. 
you see a live link there again when you get this presentation click on that link that's your donor engagement some ideas and suggestions on how to keep your donors and contributors involved uh, so that's your live event again whether it's a race a walk a run a gala an educational seminar a chef experience i've got a long list of those next that you can uh, certainly consider next slide please um, survey them. Your follow-up, as I mentioned earlier, you're going to get a 20 to 25 percent lift just for doing that. So this is all part of it. You know, as soon as, and I know Kesha is going to do this afterwards, you're going to get a link, a link to the presentation, hopefully an opportunity for you to give feedback, mostly an opportunity for them to be engaged. Here are some examples of your CRM tools that you can use. There's lots of free opportunities there. I would imagine most of you already have one, but Google offers a great one with their form, SurveyMonkey, Typeform. These are all good options. Do a, a debrief afterwards with your key uh, executives, key partners, and key contributors. Get feedback. Uh, don't be afraid to learn. Don't be afraid to listen. Uh, you can even do that in advance. A lot of what we're seeing with nonprofits now are some advanced work on that. Hey, here's what we're thinking. You are a con key contributor and key partner and supporter of our organization. This is what we want to do. What do you think? Be open to suggestions and still you will need to make some decisions. If you're going to offer that up to 20 key people, you might get 20 opinions. One might say, I have Zoom fatigue. I have webinar fatigue. I have virtual fatigue. How about this? And then take all that into consideration and know that their voices are heard. You have listened to them. And this is what you've decided to do as a result of all of their incredible feedback. And again, I think most importantly here is you will get lift of 20% for that, those participants and those that are even in your network. Sorry that you missed it. It was a great event. Here's a 30 second recap from the really fun, interactive, engaging um, virtual event that we did. And please, your support is needed more than ever. Last opportunity for you to support the initiative. Here's what it's gonna go towards. So really, really important as a part of your overall game plan there. Next slide, please. So here's some ideas. Um, galas, have some speakers. Again, I think a lot of people right now are available, uh, celebrities, uh, semi-celebrities and non-celebrities or people of, of known uh, in your industry or field. Maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's a health expert, maybe it's a teacher, but people that can really speak to your subject that gives a little break in the action. You can still do your silent auctions. Um, they're kind of fun. Maybe it's a limited inventory now, but it's a very appropriate inventory of, you know, here instead of we usually have 50 items to bid on, you know, we're going to do a live auction at the end of it, but the silent auction is open. Click on the link to your right, and here's a way, for, you know, for during the next hour exclusively with the group that's on, you can bid on these items all go towards the cause. Musical performances, we've all seen those, but they're fun. It's a great way to break things up. It's live, whether it's a celebrity or not often in your network or your contributor or support portfolio are people that have talent. Uh, reach out to them. Are there any uh, musicians? Are there any magicians? Are there any entertainers? We'd love to have you on as part of our uh, hour-long uh, virtual event that we're hosting. The runathons, the runathons, walkathons, rideathons, uh, we have produced a number of those. Uh, they're fabulous. People are engaged. No, it's not the same as having 500, 1,000, or 10,000 walkers, runners, racers, bikers out for an actual event. But in virtual world, they do have an opportunity to have people follow them and support them and check in. And whether it's during the time everybody's doing it or on their own, a walk in their neighborhood. Hey, I did my three miles today. It was awesome. So really, really neat ways to do that. Gaming events are very popular. Culinary competitions are fun. Um, getting two chefs or two um, non-professional chefs voting on a recipe at the end of it, having a real interactive experience, giving them 10 minutes to do a recipe. And then at the end, you get all of your uh, supporters or participants to vote which recipe they like the most. By voting, they are also contributing. Uh, you can do fun scavenger hunts, either people on their own or virtual scavenger hunts, birthdays, and then theme stuff. Wine tastings are real fun. Dance-a-thons are fun dance to a specific song. So lots of really good ideas. We can help you. One of the things we're doing after all of these calls that we've done or webinars over the last many months is we are offering 30 minutes just to talk. 
Uh, if you want to talk and, and bounce your ideas off, we will make suggestions on things you're doing. There is no, uh, again, we're not selling. There's no obligation to us whatsoever to work with us, but you might be faced with a big problem or a challenge or decision that you need to made, make. We are happy to talk with you in these 30 minute calls. Just say, tell us what's going on and we'll make suggestions on either the platform we think makes sense for you, cost you might consider incurring, uh, ideas for your event, uh, dealing with some of your contributors and there may be some attrition. So we are happy to do that. Or on this list here, you might see a suggestion and say, oh, that would be really cool. For this year, we're gonna do that. And then next year, let's see what happens. Maybe it'll be a blend of a couple of things, but here's some ideas for you. Next slide, please. And we will be wrapping up here in just a couple of minutes. Um, here are some links, uh, not only virtual events schedule, but links to some of the stuff that we have intimate association with producing. Uh, I can't take any credit. Steve, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is producing all of these events, but when you get this, please click on those links. Uh, Run to End Homelessness, Big Gay 5K, Walk for Wellness, and the Bike Hut Classic. These are all events that were at one time uh, live events or in fact, first year events that converted to virtual, but still have that feel of a, an actual event. And those are real links into those pages that give you examples of what it looks like uh, from a production perspective. And then on the top section here is just a, a sample virtual event schedule. If you want to do an hour, um, and here's a way to move a program along, an introduction by your CEO, a slideshow, a live event portion, whether that's an auction experience, a wine tasting entertainment, uh, program participant video, Hopefully you will, you'll maybe have produced something from your beneficiaries. Hey, thanks everybody so much. Thanks to the help from X, Y, and Z organization. Here's what I've been able to do. The support goes so far, that real world example of the work that is being done and where they're going. Uh, report on funds uh, raised so far, which also gives an opportunity for more contributions. Thank you videos in conclusion. You're getting people in and out it could be done during a lunchtime, it could be done during a happy hour, it could be done during a weekend, uh, but that's an example and that certainly can be expanded or reduced based on the uh, appetite of your audience and what you have potentially pulled them for. Uh, next slide and we'll wrap up here. Uh, so here is um, the, some partner options. So for the auctions and mobile bidding, these are some samples of uh, what we uh, suggest those are live links. Um, races and walks, Race Joy, that's who I mentioned earlier. That's our partner. Um, we have a fantastic relationship with them. Of course, we would put them on the top of the food chain because we have worked so closely. We are an official partner. We've worked with them on dozens and dozens of occasions. Uh, working with us on that platform is the desired option because going on your own. Uh, the benefits of scale are not there. So we are an official partner, but there's also race sign up and racery and charity footprints that do a great job. But the reason we partnered with Race Joy is because we love the platform technology, ease of use, and also the extended uh, opportunity for reduced production investment that we are able and they are able to offer because we have been able to scale that model. Um, for peer to peer, uh, and online fundraising, Cosvox, Classy, uh, QGive, and Snowball are great partners. There are certainly others, but we have been pleased and impressed with the offering that they've made. And then lastly is how to hire an outside producer or not. If you have someone or something in-house as a volunteer or staff member that can do that, that is obviously the best option. Most nonprofits, especially in what I would consider the small to mid-sized category, is that is not often the case. So uh, someone like us or someone, uh, or, or us uh, are, are a great option. Um, and just to give you a sense of that, you know, typically uh, the, the range of production costs to basically outsource that and say, let me hand this over, let us specialize in the work that we do. Um, you're gonna look at somewhere between, on the low end, $1,500 on up to, $5,000 in that range, depending upon how integrated, engaging the technology backend and time needed to build out that platform and run all of those services. And that includes 
the live event itself. So to me, a very uh, both affordable and viable option rather than have someone in-house if you don't have that already to do that for you. So just so you got a sense of where, whether, again, whether it's us or someone else of how that uh, possibly could work and play out from an investment perspective. Uh, let's go ahead to the next slide. So again, I just want to reiterate the action items. Say yes to doing it, select or keep your date, choose your format, select your platform, plan your logistics and content, promote the heck out of your event, rehearse it and practice it, go live and follow up. That is the simplest way I can make this do-it-yourself project uh, viable for you. If you follow those steps, you will have success, especially if you're considering not doing it, pausing it, postponing it. Um, this is the way, this is the way to go. And you will see that, yes, there's a time commitment, but you are going to generate the interest, engagement, and contributions that you would otherwise lose by not doing this. So I implore and beg you to not take it off your calendar or put it back on your calendar and just commit to a date and then work your way towards that date for what needs to happen to entertain and engage your contributors that are really looking to continue to support you. That is what we have seen time and again is those that support cause it, do it and causes, do it for a passionate and usually very personal intimate reason and they want to continue to support you. So please, please don't give them a reason not to and reschedule or put that date back on your calendar. Let's go to the last slide. Um, just a quick note, I'm working on a book. It's called Hope in a Time of Crisis. Um, it's gonna be coming out at the end of the year. All it is is stories on how people are dealing with uh, the fallout from coronavirus. Some are pretending it doesn't exist. Others are in complete hibernation and in their silos. And then you've got everything in between. I wanna shed light on where hope is coming from across the country and across the world. My goal is to have a story from literally every country in the world. There's 194 registered. And these are the stories and how people are dealing with across the globe. Because this to me is the great unifier of all time, at least in our lifetimes, on how people are coming together and dealing with this in a way and finding hope. Um, often you're left to your own devices after a webinar like this. If you would like our assistance and next steps, we will set up a 30 minute call. Happy, again, it's not a sales call, but to make recommendations, suggestions on scenarios very specific to you. I mentioned this in the last slide about we have the, we have the technology to support all of this if you're interested. The typical range of cost is right there for you, whether it's us or someone else. I'd like to think our services are uh, the best in business, but uh, if you have those relationships and please outreach to the people that might be able to support you in that way, we'd be happy for it to be us. We have done dozens of these calls and in most cases, it's just a consulting call. We offer advice and we stay connected and we cheer you on. And in a handful of scenarios, we have been brought on to say, we need you, we want you, we'd love to work with you and we move forward in that capacity. I think the next slide is my contact information which is there and will be will sent to you as well. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to send a direct link message to me. I will answer everything myself and direct you for whatever question you might have. This is all about hopefully providing you a context for which you can move forward with your events. And I hope I left, yeah, a few minutes for any questions that you may have. Uh, don't be shy. Um, and Keja, if you wanna take back over, and uh, you've already taken over, but uh, uh, present any of those questions. And again, thank you so much for being here. And Kesha, thanks for jumping in and, and guiding us through the presentation. I think that worked pretty well with our early bump in the road there. Great. Thank you so much, Noah. I actually really enjoyed this um, presentation too, like especially the content ideas. That was really helpful. So I hope everyone does find this presentation helpful. Um, let me see in the chat to see if there's any question. I think I saw one. Could we have the PowerPoint? Yes. So after the recording goes to our UCI DCE website, I will then go ahead and send a link to the recording and then including the PowerPoint slides. And as Noel said, make sure you click the links inside uh, that's throughout the presentation because that's a really good resource for you. Um, 
anyone else have any questions? If not, we can um, end early. Make sure you take Noel's um, email information too, just in case you have any questions or want to schedule consultation as he previously mentioned. I think I have one more slide. Uh, oh yeah, I said um, either send the email to me or to Noel for any questions. Um, I'd like to close with, if you see some courses that are of interest, uh, please let me know um, if you have any questions about the courses. Um, feel free to, I can discuss about the courses in more details with you, but otherwise they are starting on October 19th. So plenty of time, um, about like two, three weeks to make your decision. Otherwise, uh, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you again, Noel, for presenting this very, very helpful presentation during this time of need. Um, I hope we can collaborate again soon in the future. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you.